Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the CD Sport Podcast with me, Kerry Davis. Joining us today, former Ospreys, Leicester Tigers and Dragons player, and now currently playing out in the MLR, Major League Rugby, out in the US for the Houston Sabercats, Joe Thomas. How are you, Joe? Good, thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, looking forward to this. So, yeah, thanks for having me. No, appreciate you coming on and giving up your time. Uh, it worked out quite well because when I messaged you, you were actually you're back in Wales now, are you? Yeah, back back home. Been back well home for about two weeks now. Nice. Uh, was there for about three and a half months. Um, so yeah, done all my quarantine and, and all that um, COVID uh, requirements and, and all that, you know. And uh, stayed my ceiling for about ten days. Um, it's just nice to be back with the family. You know, for three and a half months is still a long time away from Definitely. family. So it's just nice to be back with everyone, back to normality, I suppose, for a few months. Definitely, yeah. So obviously when you came back from Houston, were you in the hotel quarantine or house? Uh, no, house quarantine. Oh, I think better, yeah, I had just to take two COVID tests on two day two and day eight. And yeah. I'm going to come back next. If they were, I'm fine now to just crack on. Brilliant. Can't fall day. Come back to... Uh... Well, you probably, if you're back two weeks, you caught the really nice weather when you got home. Yeah, I caught a little bit, but to be honest, yeah. it was nice to have a bit cooler air because I was living and training in bloody 35 degrees every day. And if so, who made on Sundays, like it got to 40. And it, like I heat stroke, I think, twice. <laughs> um, <laughs> like training and stuff in Houston? Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like the deck last was. Um, especially like before I left as well, it was like one degree when I landed. It was like 33, so I turned up in jeans and a jumper and I just sweat in head at all, straight through, so. Um, but yeah, it's nice to be back in normal climate and back with my family and friends, you know? Brilliant. Any, any plans, with, like, you're back now? Or are you you going to, like, maybe play for the team back home? Um, like I'll see how it plans are. I just go speak to Houston and stuff like that, but yeah. uh, potentially having a game. But uh, I'm going to go down training room, done with Abraham and, when I did I've done there with the, them boys uh, tomorrow. I'm just gonna train with them, try and stay fit and stuff like that. And then if I can play, and then hopefully I can play, I'll play. But if not, I just I go there and try and help out and train and stay fit. You know, brilliant, yeah. That's uh, yeah. Especially with your CV, uh, Joel. Like you said, uh, we'll go back a bit before we get to like the America side of it. But like you more started off Morriston, were you Morriston boy? Yeah, yeah, Morriston boy. Yeah, Morriston boy. Uh, started there when I was about six. Yeah, six years old, yeah, so. so you did, did all your juniors in Morriston and then? Yeah, all, yeah. all my juniors in Morriston went through uh, some of the school boys um, and the Dewar Shield and stuff. Mm. So I've done that twice. I played when I was 14, once about a year early. Um, and then with the 16s, with the Ospreys, I've done that a year early as well. Um, and then just through the academy system then and in Neath College, um, and I played for Bonny Mine for about a half a season as well. The senior rugby, I, just, I wanted to go to college rugby, and they, the Ospreys let me go and play for someone in the championship. It was either that, either Bonny Mine or Tata Steel. They said I can go play for us. So I said I'll go play for Bonny Mine then because obviously across the road. And yeah, it's the old, it's the old, it's the oldest one. The like, uh, they're quite enemies, I suppose, and they, but yeah, boys are very brilliant, and I really enjoyed my time with Betty Fair. Um, I, I, I learned how to drink. More than play rugby up there, I think. And <laughs> yeah, the boys up there, good boys and stuff. So they looked after me and took me under their wing. Uh, the, and, um, the, yeah. But Bon of Mine's got a bit of a rep, haven't they? A bit of a bunch of headers up there. The old Bon. Yeah. yeah. No, they've got a good bunch of guys, to be fair. I really enjoyed my time up there. Nice I, still keep, I still keep in contact with them now, like through social media and stuff, you know? Yeah. And whenever yeah. I see them out, and, uh, they'd, you know, they'd, they'd always make time and say hello for me, you know? Yeah, class. Yeah. Well, yeah. Sick. And then and, and then from Borny, is that to Aberavon then or I went from no, I went to Swansea Whites then. Ah right. I, when I was like, so I played for I played a a couple of a season or two down there for Swansea Whites and then to Abraham from there. So I more, more clubs in Tigerwood. Ah, yeah, a bit uh, of a bit of a rugby slag draw. I know. More, yeah, more <laughs> colours in the ring for like, get about to fed. Uh, but no, like I really, I, to be honest, with you, I, I've always really enjoyed what, what I played. So and I've always got on with people and stuff like that, which is half a battle. Yeah. And uh, I love my time at um, one of mine, Swansea, uh, Abraham as well. 
you know, I, I, I like Barbara Evans Club. It's really family club. They look after the boys in there really well. Like, yeah, the owner yeah. and your own John and and Myra's wife, they really make it like a family environment, you know. Mm. So when the boys go down there, Evan, Evan just loves it. Evan just loves the club. I don't think as many, I don't think as many people have a bad word to say about it, especially about the people who are involved at all. So I'm looking forward to getting back in and I'm throwing the ball around with them, you know. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I think sometimes clubs like, you know, like sounds like Abra like they're so, if you're so close, if all the boys are so close, you play better as yeah. well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. Each other. definitely. Um, I, th- I think like clubs who've got loads of money and then they pay this guy, that guy, you know, and they get ringers in. Obviously, yeah. they got the quality of players, but they haven't got that camaraderie. Do you know what I mean? No, it's never, it never, it'll never last. Like, no, it's never be, last. Yeah. So, yeah, it's got to be a good back. It's got to be good foundations, not just to entice them for money. Exactly. Yeah. So, bang, bang on. And during, obviously, I want to mention too, you won, you were, uh, you won the Grand Slam with Wales in the twenties as well, didn't you? 2016. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who, who, what club were you with then? Do you remember? Abra, that was Abra Avon then, yeah. Nice. That was good, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, no, that was that was pretty sick, yeah. So, um, I think that's probably the most enjoyable rugby I ever played with them in the twenties. Like all the boys, there, like we had a, an unbelievable squad, mm. and we all just loved playing with each other. Like we, yeah, we got in the beers every weekend together, and and come like. Make effort to see to do stuff with each other, and make them build that you know that um that good environment for each other, and I think that's why we played so well, just because we just loved going on the beer together, or going out for food, or mm. just going into training. We could all have a laugh, a joke, and and stuff like that, and it'd just be an environment where you just love being. Yeah. When, when that comes to an end, then after the, the World Cup, that's pretty. I pretty got it. Then then it's into the the real world then of professional rugby and you have no safety net to fall on to in terms of like academy sides or car sides you're in the big sort of open water then I suppose and, but then I, I, the under 20s that was probably more, yeah, the most enjoyable the most rugby I look back with the fondest memories on is that that period of six weeks and the World Cup sorry yeah That's pretty, pretty sick to be fair I, I'd love to go back and do it all again you know was, was it the World Cup did you play in the World Cup with Dav Dav or Wells is that the one? No. In New no, Zealand? He's a year ahead. He played a year early. Ah, right. And I'm a year younger than Dad, so it's like his own age. I don't think he was... Yeah, because he went to New Zealand, I think. That's when he played. Yeah, in. yeah that's the one. He had the, he's got the fastest try in uh, yeah. international rugby, isn't he? So he's, which... like, uh, he's quite quick and fairness to him, I'll give him that. Yeah, he's... Uh... Well, yeah, I think when I had him on the podcast, as it stands, I think that's still the fastest try. I think he said as well. Yeah, like, you know? but, um, kick yeah. yeah caught it off the kickoff against Fiji. Yeah, right? yeah that was brilliant. Yeah. And so yeah, I, after you won the well with the worst twenties, like you know, you got Adam Beard you were playing with. He was in the Lions now, isn't he? Or just yeah. team. Uh, Owen Watkins, Dylan Lewis, is it? Glenn boys. Yeah. Any other boys at the top uh, of my head? Key and Giles. Key. Yeah, Keon. Um, who else was there? But Jared Evans, Dan Jones, yeah. the, the two of staffs. Yeah. Um, who was in the forwards? Do you think? Corey Domachowski, the loose head, plays for the Blues. Yeah. That's uh, some, some good boys then, like, who's oh, gone on yeah. and gone on yeah, and done bigger squad, things. Yeah, hmm. yeah we're on the your squad. But it was just, yeah, just one of them. Good timing, good, good boys, good. I think it's all come to, into place perfectly for that, you know. And um, yeah, like with the Six Nations, we would that we beat the only team to beat England away in the Six Nations. I think so, like at that at that level as well. And we can yeah. we can we can as a good a healthy score line. Um. So yeah, like we take a few boxes that we wanted to, you know, we, we in terms of setting goals, we tick a lot of the boxes we wanted to. So yeah, yeah. It's awesome. England, yeah. England are always like all the like age group well to the top. They're always strong, and they they got such yeah. good strength and depth. Yeah. England have like, yeah, they're always they always good. And then in the, in the World Cup, then they, they brought a lot of the boys in. I think a few of the boys from the Six Nations would release. I think they play in Premiership rugby, so that yeah. shows how good they were. Like you know, yeah. So when they come back, in the World Cup, I think they. I'm not sure if they won it that year, the World Cup. Yeah, could have. Yeah, I think they have one. They did, they did. No, they're sorry. They beat Ireland in the final, I think. Mm. So, 
it shows that they're, like, they're doing pretty good. So, so from there then, that's when you went into the Ospreys, is it? Straight after the Wales? Yeah, so I was always, when I was with Abraham and Swansea, I was always um, with the Ospreys, coming to the academy. Yeah. But then to, to get game time then, they'd, um, an experience they'd send you to, like, your, uh, well, they send you to a premiership team or championship team. Yeah. And within the region and, um, so they sent me to Swansea first because they were in championship at the time uh, when they got relegated. Um, and then from there, then I went back to like obviously back and forth the Oscars. And I feel I made my day for the, the Oscars. I was like 17 against Gloucester in the, the Anglo Welsh Cup, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so then, but that, in between then, I go back and forth with Aberavon and stuff like that as well. So. I'd always be playing this. I'd loved. I just wanted to play, so I didn't care where. Just as long as you get me down there, I'd play. Um. So, Swansea, my first couple of years, and then straight back to Abraham, and then, yeah, hopefully just trying to pick up a game here and there for the Oscars end. So I'd always be training with them. Yeah. Um. But then they just yeah, go we'll get game time basically. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, that's what you want. You you don't want to be. I know you're in the Ospreys, but you you want to be. Even if it's Abraham and Swansea, you don't want to, you don't want to be sitting on the touchline. You know what I mean? You'd no, exactly. rather go back and play a full game for Abraham or Swansea. Yeah, you know I, mean? I, I wouldn't mind when playing football. So if yeah. I had to go play for Mars, I'd go play for Mars. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, didn't really bother me. I'd play anywhere. So yeah, I can see how with your bloody CV. Back in, I know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All the rugby teams you've been to. <laughs> but no, you, you. How many? How many years were you there in total? Ospreys, five. Uh, yeah, well, I started with about 17, 18, and yeah. uh, I, I was there from, actually, including the academy and stuff like that, yeah. uh, since I was, like, 15. Yeah. But, like, profess, professionally, I took sort of about four years, yeah, four or five years. Nice. So, and then, so what happened after the Ospreys? Uh, so, yeah, so I left I left the Ospreys. Um, it was a massive project reset with the, the, the financial structure of how they want to play players and... And then they'd have funding cuts and stuff. Um, I, I couldn't tell you why, but yeah. I was I was originally like asked to stay for two seasons, and then I thought, oh, and I didn't really go looking for anything else. So I thought, oh, I'm happy. Yeah. And then obviously this when that kicked in, they said, oh, we can't keep you on. So like we got to put our money elsewhere. So I was like, oh, a bit of a shock. I was like, what the fuck? I thought it'd always be like not like an offspring. I I loved them. I'd have a season ticket down there, and I loved playing. I loved all well, my friends were there. You know, I, I never thought I'd go anywhere else. And it was a, a bit of a shock. I was like, oh, shit, I better try and find a club then. Uh, and actually, because it was like a bit late. I think it was like end of January, maybe middle of February that this happened. And by then, most of the deals are done, I suppose, for a lot of the boys. That's that's the time you start finding out if you're going to be staying or going and. Um, teams already signed a lot of boys already, so I couldn't really find any. I think honestly, you know, I was like, shit, thing after trying to do something here. So I thought, like, I always wanted to go and play in New Zealand, and I thought to myself, um, that's what I want to do. And uh, my dad's friend is like a global recruitment, uh, Steve Hale, and um, he got me in touch with uh, Audra Hanger, the team in New Zealand, and. I said, look, I, I, I spoke to the Osprey, I said, look, if I'm not going to be staying here, can I just go elsewhere? And now I'm, you know, I'm call a day early. I just come back from injury and I, I wasn't getting much game time. So I said, look, can I just call it quits here and mm. go and play New Zealand? And they were really good about it and sent me with their best wishes. And it was a, it was a hell like, it was, I don't have any bad things to say, but the Osprey's either, you know, and those are up front with me and stuff. So they said, yeah, all of them sent, like, sent me down there. And I went down there for like three, four months. Nice. And uh, I was working in a, because they obviously I wasn't paid because mm. I was only amateur rugby in New Zealand until you're full time, I suppose. Um, so I had a job in a timber factory, stacking wood and stuff with all the Fijian boys. And well, most of the boys would play for the club, really. Yeah. And um, it was hard work because I was training with Waikato as well. I was hoping to try and make the Might of 10 squad. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what the, the whole reason of going to New Zealand as far as is just like to try and go and crack it down there, really. Mm. The, the bulls, you really, and they've gone to the, the best place in the world and to go and play rugby and try and crack it down there. It's just because they got so much talent down there. And I, yeah. I, yeah. once you go there and play, and you realize like you're playing against boys who are like 120 kilos props who can step better than me, you know. <laughs> so it, was, it was a bit of a learning curve because I remember just finding the line against step bear prop and everyone was whooping his ear on the sideline. And I was like, oh my god. 
it's a different game. Different, different game, game. Yeah. yeah. So no, I love the experience. And the boys done are brilliant as, as well. Like you know, and uh, they didn't mind a few a few beers on a Saturday after the game. That's for sure. Um, so yeah, I really enjoyed that. Just going down the different competition, different part of the world, and just learning and trying to add to my game. You know. Yeah, definitely. Um, but then when, well, obviously, once I was there, then I was I was out on on the on the park. I had an email through, a text message through saying, oh, like Leicester are looking for a centre. Will I be interested? And I thought, well, that most definitely, like it's a massive club, isn't it? And if I, I didn't think that, I didn't think he'd come to be honest with you. I thought they'd probably find someone a bit more established than me and, and stuff like that. And well, they said, no, there's a contact if, if you want it. And I was like, oh, all right, then, yeah, like, I'll definitely do that. And um, so I had the opportunity to come back and uh, play with Leicester then. And, awesome. Yeah. What, what, what was Leicester? Were they keeping an eye on you in New Zealand? Do you know about that? I, I, I don't know. I don't know. To be honest, it was, it was one massive whirlwind because I went from shipping. I'm not gonna have a club to yeah. going to like sort of like except that I might not be playing professional rugby again. Yeah. So go through all that process in your mind, and then because they that was quite it's quite tough as a player to accept to accept something like that, isn't it? Especially like Almost, yeah, yeah. So I went down there. And I was, um. Yeah, when, when I was there, I just went through a little process of just relax, enjoy. You might try and crack, you might try and get in a team here. And if you try and get in, you might attend team, someone might see you and pick you up from there. Or... Yeah. So, no, when I had that, when I found out that I still was looking for a centre, I was completely shocked. I completely out the blue. And I just, because uh, I was looking for I was looking for places all, all around, you know, all around the world. Yeah. Like, obviously, you know, I'd go anywhere to play, but yeah. there's nothing. And, and when I came out of the blue, I thought, Christ. I love that please. And um so I yeah, I flew back then, flew straight back. The club in New Zealand were like brilliant. The owner, Steve, he printed all my contract for me and signed it. Um and then he obviously he was a witness of the contract being signed, so he helped me out massively. Uh and I flew back as soon as the next couple of days after that and got stuck in the pre-season. Uh, so that was a bit of a shock to the body as well. I've been on the beers most weekends in the <laughs> into a professional into a professional pre-season. I think I think I went home and cried a few times after after the day. Is it? Yeah, then, yeah, yeah. So, but no, like, like I say, massive whirlwind, and <clears throat> like, oh, like luckily I come out to the the other side of it and land on my feet. You know, definitely, yeah. And like I think when you were with Leicester, it was like um, I'm trying to think now. Like Tula was Tula you there then? Yeah, yeah. You would you'd be there any. Uh, yeah, Ben um, Youngs is it? Yeah. Um, what are the boys? Was Owen uh, Williams there then? No, you no, no. Me. George Ford was the other half there. Then. Oh, George Ford was there. That's another yeah. world class player. Yeah. Uh, so Ellis Gens, a lot of Tom Youngs. Yeah. Uh, a lot of really good experience international players, ah, yeah. which, which I learned loads off. You know, mm. like my my knowledge of the game grew so much being there, being on them players and how they see the game and. I've looked at some of the world, some of the best coaches. Like I learned a lot from like Mike Ford. Um well, Gordon Murphy was the head coach and he obviously a world class player himself. Yeah, of course, yeah. So I, yeah, and Phil Blake, the defence coach, who's like a bit of a rugby league legend in Australia. Um so yeah, it's just a really good environment in terms of just learning and I was like a sponge for that year. And they but they're all really nice people and they all welcome me in and um you walk and you think, oh bloody hell! I've seen these boys on TV, look like, and I played. I played against them a few times. Mm. But when you go in the change room, when you're part of them, you think, think oh, fair play, like it's pretty, pretty sick. Yeah, yeah it's pretty. It's a massive club as well, isn't it, Leicester? So, oh, definitely. Yeah, they've uh, back now. Back they used to win you like the Heineken Cup all the time yeah. and stuff back in the day, didn't they? they yeah, like, yeah. So much and stuff. Yeah, massive. Uh, Welford Road is a. Mm. Pretty cool stadium to play in as well. They always get massive for it. I think they'd always have about 20,000 people there, maybe, maybe maybe even more. And um, yeah, so it was awesome to play there in front of them, you know. Uh, the, the massive following, massive following there. To be fair, right? English Premiership always they always sell the stadiums out tonight. English, yeah, Premiership. it looks like I'm telling you anyway. I think I think they do the best for really. you. It's just mm. one of the, the leagues I love, it's probably the most enjoyable league to watch, I'd say, mm. also, along with Super Rugby, you know, like. I don't know how I don't know what they do differently, but it's just 
it's always exciting, isn't it, to watch one of them games? Yeah. I'd... And it's not, you're not, you're not going to come back thinking, oh, well, please, you should check in. Because in fact, they have a go and they play some good rugby. And they, have their, they have their own identities as well. So you know, like, when you go to, uh, for, in, for instance, come to Leicester, it's going to be a tough, it's going to be a tough game up front. Or yeah. if you go to Ross, you know, if Ross are going to play, they're going to play, they're going to have a go from anywhere. And they all, they all have their own identities and they've always stuck to them. So that, that's a good, like, that's a good thing about it. I think that's, People love because they know the club as well, and I think that's yeah. why people are going to watch them. Yeah, and I think as well, like you said, they've yeah. kept like <clears throat> in Wales and like Ireland, those regions, isn't it? Like the Australia, yeah. the Swansea, and East, and what is it, Bridgend? Yeah, like obviously Leicester's Leicester, it's like their own city, in it. Yeah, that's like, it. Um, you know, as a Newcastle Falcons, it's like the, their own city and stuff. But no, I enjoy watching uh, the, the the Premiership. It's uh, and it's like say some good players there too, you know. And they have yeah. a lot of, they get a lot of like, um, like who's over there now from Australia, New Zealand? Uh, what's his name? Fe- it's Fekatoa with Wasps now and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Fekatoa, yeah, Kirby yeah. Beals being over there, any, um, yeah. and Pocock. They get loads of like Aus- Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, a lot of South Africans in Saracen, yeah. isn't it? I know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. They, they, I think it attracts the biggest names, isn't it? Like when you mm. excited the league where to play in Europe and stuff like that as well. Yeah. And I think boys are obviously. Well, enticed to come in and have get, get stuck into European rugby because I guess different to super, super rugby, so I'm not rugby. It's more, I think it's more like in super rugby, they just play, don't they? And they just go for it. Like, but yeah. that be, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot more like I say, a lot more pr- like pressure, not yeah, pressure to win, maybe. Yeah, or, yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, oh, the fence is a lot more organized and stuff like rocks and aerial. Competition, they're more focused on, like you've seen on the Lions probably with all the aerial battles and stuff like that. So there's more pressure on little situations like that rather than just playing, which is just, you, you feel it, don't you? And that's why I think a lot of people like to watch it. Definitely. I I, I lived in Australia for seven years and I played a bit in Oz, like, and like you said, my first like season that I played over there, it was like a penalty. We had a penalty in our own 22. I'm expecting to kick it down field. In fact, how nice yeah. just grabbing the ball, tap and go. <laughs> But I was like, you know, slow it down, boy. Yeah. <laughs> Christ. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just different, um, different sides of rugby, really, isn't it? Yeah. But uh, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk a bit about uh, the old American style of rugby because after Leicester, that's when you made the move to the US. First yeah. first Welsh player to go over there, Joe, are you? I think so. I think I'm, yeah, I think I'm the only Welsh person as well. Um, but like, like I've seen, like, a lot of boys you know, leaving clubs now with all funding cuts due to COVID and stuff. I think a lot of people should look to go there, you know? Yeah. It's, it's different it's, because over here you play, you know, if you go an hour on the, down the road, you play and you have a game and when you go to Ireland or, or play Scotland, something like that. But over there, you go from LA to New York to Seattle and, <laughs> yeah. like, you, and like you always you always get like, because it's a different time, an hour ahead or an hour behind. There's a different time zones. You always have to fly the day before. So you get time to go out and see a city as well. So yeah, brilliant. As part of playing rugby, you're traveling around and then mm. if you fly back the day after the game as well, which is good. So you get to have a night out in the pub. That's awesome. So, That's like the yeah. best. Like that would be Yeah. So it's like playing rugby on, on a little holidays, like yeah. a little weekend trip away. And yeah, I test out a few watering holes in a few of the cities. Bri- and, I, I, uh, I, I, where's the list? I got the list. I got some lists. Yeah, I'm not sure if because over there is conferences, isn't it? Do yes, East and West. Yeah. Yeah. So where's the list? Fuck, I've got two lists. Yeah. Um, what were you in East? Uh, West. I was. West. Where were you? It was like there, yeah, right, oh. like where the bottom. So you played Austin, LA, um, yeah. San Diego Legion, Seattle. You played Seattle, Seawolves, yeah. Utah Warriors. Yeah. Um. I'm pretty sure I've seen you. Haven't you boys played New Orleans as well? Yeah, I've played New Orleans. Yeah. Um, Tal Dirksen plays for them, so it's good to catch up with them because I played them a few times at the Ospreys and I yeah. caught up with it. And uh, that is pretty, it was pretty weird, like, in the other side of the world and seeing a familiar faces. Yeah. And, and he's got company on the beer, so I was open to have a night out. We, uh, that game with only we had, we, we had a bus there. And uh, in nine hours on the bus, we had traffic in the middle by Louisiana. Yeah. And we sat in the bus then for like nine hours. It was, it was <laughs> like and the worst thing was we lost as well. So we got did on the way back and thinking, oh, that's cool. You, you, and, did, uh, you didn't end up going to Bourbon Street then, yeah? 
I, I went down like the night before to have a walk around just to get out and stretch my legs. And everybody's yeah. like, oh, well, the street is it's a famous street. So I went down there. It was, it was like Magaluf. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, mad. Uh, yeah. Got, they got a game in the morning and love some of this. And uh, they let you bounce in. It's about a mile long, is it? And it's oh, like it's... three or four layers of bars on top of each other. But, uh, it's like, uh... yeah. It's like a like an old style, um, like a French yeah. quarter. French quarter, that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah. I yeah, I've yeah. been I've been there and I've been on the piss and it's fucking mental. Yeah. They have um I don't know. If, do you drink there? Do you say no? Just walk. No, no. I just went for a walk down there to see what it was like because we had a game in the morning. There's a, there's a drink over there. It's called um. You might have even heard about it, but um, because obviously New Orleans got affected by the Hurricane Katrina, didn't they? Yeah. Uh, so they have a drink out there and it's called the Hurricane. And no one will tell you what's in the drink. And I is I stro- super super strong, you know. And I was drinking yeah. those, and fuck, I was gone. That's I don't remember the night. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'd love to go. Imagine like yeah, like going on a stag do or something in New Orleans. It'd be fucking insane. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think a lot of people do go there for stag do's. Oh, do they? Yeah. One of the best, one of the top places to go, I think, because mm. when I was walking down the street, you'd see like groups of men and groups of women all like like carrying each other home. I think yeah. we're carrying each other to the next bar, and I see you now you see some. Some proper states on that, to be fair. Like, see some sights. Like, what? Yeah. Um, obviously. So you were in Houston. What? I like. I've 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 done a bit of America myself. I've been Washington, yeah. but I've yeah. never been to Houston. What? Uh, so what's that like? Then? What's Houston like? Boiling. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you open the front door, honestly. It's like open the oven. And it's like, um, yeah. No, it's was, it was a, it was a nice city, to be fair. Like, it was really um, people were really friendly. Um. The city was like nice and modern. There's obviously the, the, they got the basketball there, they have the baseball there. Yeah. Uh, soccer, the major league soccer um, there. Um, so there's like lots to do there as well, you know. But just because it's so warm and stuff like that, you just don't want to leave your the AC. Yeah, I bet. But uh, yeah, like the city, no, there's lots to do. Um, like obviously NASA's there, so I went down to the space station. That was really good. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah so that was good. That was a good experience. Uh, but yeah, most of the time I just go watch the bit. Like we went to the baseball three times. Mm. It's just little things I got to do, and like not like a Tuesday evening instead of sitting there and watching TV. You think, oh, let's go watch the baseball, or let's go watch the basketball. I went to watch the Rockets, Houston Rockets against Philadelphia. Brilliant, yeah. Like, just stuff like I just stuff you'd never think of. Like you know, sitting out, well, normally you sit in the house to play the PlayStation. Yeah. Oh no, this is just going up to basketball and this is quite cheap as well. It's relatively you know, you set up at the top of the stadium of the stadiums, but you know, just the awesome experience of being there, like uh, yeah. And they just do it properly. Like, they always entertain properly, don't they in America? They always do things massive. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the food is great as well. And, like they do well, really nice Mexican food. So really close to Mexico. So the Mexican food is really nice. Nice. Um I've lived in Chipotle really. <laughs> yeah, the uh, uh, yeah the rap place, isn't it? And yeah, the, yeah. Um, burritos, eh? burritos, yeah. Yes, it's like a subway but for Mexico. Yeah, it's yeah, done yeah. in. Like, I've been there like three, four days a week. Um, <laughs> yeah, and then obviously the Texas, they do like love, they love their meat as well. So when you go for a rack of ribs, they come up like a like half a cow on my plate once. <laughs> and yeah, they, so. they, you can have some big mamas over in there uh, too. Like they what they oh. like they grab, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you come back a few kilos heavier, uh, Joe, yeah? I did, I did put a few pounds <laughs> on, yeah, not gonna lie. Uh, yeah, but like, it was awesome, like, wherever you went, um, you know, there's always something different about each place you went, which is good as well. Yeah. So, you, you, you the stuff to do is, you know, just sitting in a hotel room, drinking coffee, you're out and about, just, just taking it all in, really, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Especially, like, you being from, obviously, Wales, and yeah. prior to this, have you been over before, America? No, that's my first oh, time. So, in fact, make, you know, make the most of it, isn't it? Like, yeah. And, um, yeah. like, we were saying, I can't remember if it was off before or in the podcast, but you've got another season out there as well, haven't you? Next yeah, season. Yeah, so I've done two plus one season. Mm. Team deal, but we just um, signed a new head coach now, Heineken Mayer, the old SPAFTA head coach. Oh, yeah. Is he your head coach now? He's going to be the head coach up there oh, now. Yeah. Um, well, director of rugby, they said. Well, yeah. I think that's the title, but, yeah, so... But the thing with America is like you can get you can be drafted with like the NBA and the NFL or you can just get drafted across. Yeah. So you, you might not you might not always be the same club. So hopefully I find out. Well, hopefully I 
go back and stuff like that. So I really enjoyed the type of nice boys and stuff. And um, so it'd be good to work with for someone of that stature in terms of coaching. You know, you got to a World Cup semi final with South Africa and stuff. Uh, I think they beat Wales in the quarter finals that year. What year so, was this? And that was this to the was the head coach, I think he was. Who was? The Heineken Mayor was the head coach. Oh, at the time. Coach. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. He's coaching some big teams and some big he's coaching some big players and yeah. he's done well with them. So it'd be good to get to like sort of learn off him and stuff, I suppose. To, like to be honest, right? I think it's gonna be I think I know a lot of players go to Japan and all that stuff now, but I think the American market's gonna like really attract some big boys. Well look like LA's got like Kitto and stuff, haven't they? Adam Ashley yeah. Cooper. Uh Ben Folden still in New York, is he? Yeah, yeah, Andy Ellis is in New York as well. The old Andy old Ellis, yeah. yeah, he's there. Uh, uh, it's Chris Robb shows in San Diego. Uh, yeah. So there's yeah. big names up there, you know. And um, I think the league within I think about five, ten years, it's going to be quite a big league. And I think mm. I, I shared on some other interview before, like what's like to, to the big cast will be like you go to France or Japan, it's going to be a language and a culture barrier. Mm. When you um go to America it's a place everyone wants to go isn't it a place yeah. everyone wants to go on holidays and see and explore and go around And so I think the longer time goes on there'll be more teams and a lot more players will be going there because it's like it's just an enjoyable just an enjoyable time really cool place like yeah yeah I think that's right I think that'll entice people to go there as well well so, I've had um, who have I had David Wells and Nick Tompkins you know the centre Wales yeah and, yeah and they both like Dav, Dav's obviously he's taken a step back he's gone to play for Edward Vale now yeah, and I said, Oh, anything would entice you, you know, going back pro. And he said, America. Yeah. And um, Nick Tompkins said to on the podcast, He goes, Um, I said, Have you going? Would you like, you know, I know you're with Saris now, but any other places tickle your fancy? And he said, Oh, the US really tickles yeah. his fancy as well, you know, yeah, it's them two boys, like, yeah. So I feel, I feel quite fortunate, you know, like a lot of boys with COVID lost out on contrast, especially now with all. I think well, there's a big clear up. A lot of boys were released this year from clubs and stuff in Wales. Yeah. So I, I definitely feel very fortunate to have this opportunity to go to hopefully go back as well, you know? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, like just really, really fortunate. And I think like within 10 years, like they do it, they do it properly as well. So like they always have curtain raiser games. So like families come out and watch their kids and then they stay there for the whole day. So they all do tailgating. Yeah. Yeah. In the car park when you come into the stadium, it's all always called people tailgate. Ah, that's awesome. You see like groups of cars and stuff packed together, and people with t- like um, marquees up and mm. little barbecues in the back of the, the trucks and sitting there selling a few beers and just enjoying themselves. And then they all just love rugby. They all just think like it's just they all think we're crazy playing rugby out there. Um, so yeah, like they do it, just do it properly. Like I, I think on the final on the weekend, I think last weekend just gone there's the final over there late against Atlanta. Mm. At the end of the game, there's Steve Aoki DJing Did in the stadium. Yeah, just for at the end of the game and stuff like that, and um, they just do it properly, like you know. I, I was I was browsing through the Houston Sabercast page, and Fifty Cent dropped by. Did you, did you see that photo? Oh, uh, no, that was Photoshop. That was. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, yeah, I yeah. yeah, was that's that. <laughs> my old man, no, my old man done the same. Because oh, I can't. Is it? Was that the easy? I was like, oh, no, we were on about. Yeah. Oh, a nice photo cool. on, on the boys. Um, Sam, I think he 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 done it. I think and yeah. uh, he had everyone's pants down because everyone said, oh, I got there, I missed him and stuff like that. Back good photo. Good yeah. Photoshop. Hey, eh? I was yeah. like, ah, fifth, like because. It's one of the things, like, it could be most, like, it could be, like, America's obviously got all the A-listers and stuff. Yeah. And you'd be surprised, like, they'd be like, oh, I like, I really like this rugby. And they might just, 50 might be like, you know, I'm going to back yeah. know, Houston or I'm going to back, you know, whatever yeah. team. Is it, is it, um, oh, what's the word? Uh, what's it called now? Sorry, Caps in the league over there. Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. There, so you couldn't have, like, a, a I'm not sure by them, by the mind. Oh, it's a bit uh, backhanded, is it? Yeah, I think it's something going on. Uh, mm. It's some teams, but... Mm. Uh, but no, like, you do get a lot of, like, a couple of celebrities coming, like, Steve, Steve, I watched one of the games, no, Steve, from Jackass. Yeah. He, he was at the one, of the, yeah, one of the games, and the... I can't remember the name now, the actor of Hot, the Hot Tub Time Machine, the, like, the funny, the comedian. Um, not, Seth, not Seth Rogen, is it? No, no, no. no. 
I can't remember his name. I left. He's on. Um, he's, I can't remember his name. But the boys all them for him in the change rooms. Yeah. Uh, at the end of the LA game and stuff like that. So and he so he sports. Like, yeah. So he sports like Houston actually. Mm. Um. So yeah, like if people are starting to get starting to buy into it now. Mm. Out there. So. Oh, what's the What's the level like out there, Joe? Like playing wise. I think like it's really physical. Like it's like I got smashed about a few times. To be fair. Yeah. Right. Um, but like, it's like I'd say the English Championship at the minute. That's right, though. Yeah. And so it's, it's good that like the players you play with, like when you play against LA, like they're full of like boys who play super rugby. Mm-hmm. Or like like, like Macket or Adamash Coopers, Dave Dennis, like some Dave Dennis. well-known international players. Yeah. And they have, they have some exciting American boys as well playing for them. So yeah. they played against them, like they were like the top team. And uh, like they were like top end of like you know, English Championship, maybe even like a pro low end pro fourteen side, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, right. But like <clears throat> when you play like some of the other teams, I'm sure like you new know, like we didn't have the best of seasons, you know. But I'd say some of that's like Championship level, and so it was, it was good. Like it was a good experience because like, the boys who were there were like like American internationals, Canadians, Argentinians, Uruguayans. <laughs> Namibians with with boys from all over really. So yeah. there are boys who play international rugby as well. Yeah. Like a, lot of, a lot of them played in World Cups, a lot of them have played in like um in warm up think international like World Cup qualifying games and stuff like that. So boys have got really some good experience as well. Yeah. A- a- any boys go to because America USA and Canada was over here, weren't they? Yeah. Any boys from your team over here? Yeah. There was um there's a couple of boys who played for Canada, Rob Povey. Liam Murray and Lucas Albanoz nice. played for Canada and I don't think we had any in the USA team though. Mm. Still though, you got uh, the international like Taliban, do you know what I mean? Yeah, so like, yeah. Rugby, like, yeah. And even players like yourself, do you know what I mean? You've played in like the Premiership, you've played in uh, the Pro 14 and you know, it's uh, yeah, I can imagine it being good level. I've been watching highlights to be honest. Um, obviously when I knew you were coming on, I was watching some of Houston's games. But I've actually yeah. been I've been watching like the LA. How do you suppose, How do they say guillotines? Guillotines. Yeah, guillotines. Just to have a look, to see what the, you know Adam Ashley Cooper's yeah. up to and all them boys. But uh, yeah. it does look good. Like it does look good rugby. It just looks yeah. terrible. I, d- I don't yeah. like the, I don't like LA's kit though. It's fucking white and pink in it. Too, too, yeah, too white. But they play the, they play in like a massive stadium, don't they? The they the yeah. So that was except like an awesome experience because I can remember like. Stand there because for every game they sing the, the American national anthem, the fans and stuff, and the American boys do. And um, like when they come, when it to the anthem finished, they lit the Olympic torch and uh, the Olympic flame. Sorry, and um, so I just remember standing there going like, "Christ, it's twenty-seven degrees on a sat on a Sunday in LA, yeah. and I'm playing in the Coliseum." I said, "It's pretty, pretty, pretty sick." This like, yeah. fair play. it's not a bad little stint. This, yeah. No, oh, just a boy from yeah, a boy from Arsenal's trying to go uh, I'm gonna go in LA like, like Exactly, play, play. yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like would you rather be playing there or would you rather be playing in my steak on a Tuesday night yeah, bloody exactly. in the middle of November? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's awesome. I think I know what I'd rather. And like you were saying, the, the heat over there is like really hot. It's uh, the season, it, it is kind of a summer sport over there, is it kind of? It's like it runs from um from like January, I think the preseason starts and until the season end. It was delayed this year because of COVID, but normally it's like the season preseason starts in early January and you finish by end of May normally. So it's only like a oh, five. Right. Yeah, it's not long. Yeah. But there's more teams in there that next season, I think. I think Dallas and Chicago get teams in there coming in. Ooh, local derby. Yeah, Dallas. Yeah, yeah I think so. Mm. Um, so that'd be good to see them in other two places, hopefully. And um, yeah, just like the weather, the weather situation, whatever state you go to is always different. Mm. So, like, if you go to like Seattle, it's always generally been like Wales, rainy and cold most, most of the time. Then you go down to like Houston, West, and it's just like 38 degrees on a, on a Friday night, and you're thinking, Jesus, yeah, it's just bonkers. And then, obviously, like, you play up in Utah, and it's at altitude. and Stuff like that. So it's always this different place, different landscapes, different stuff like that. Yeah. So 
I didn't think of that. Yeah, I'll play in that altitude as well. Did that like make yeah. you, are you like fact early on with that, are you? Yeah, just, yeah, but not well, not so good. Like the ball goes through that when you kick it, and like yeah. you just feels like your lungs are burning when you're like when you when you know the balls and play for like three minutes, you're like, Jesus, someone kick yeah. it up. <laughs> yeah, because that was my first game it was Utah. I come in by flu in on the Friday, watched one of the games the day I got there, and then. The following, so I only had like two days of training, and I had to fly to Utah to play. I can remember I still jet lagged. I was, I think, I was, I, I come on the bench off the bench, yeah. cover on the wing, and I can remember running in the back. We think, oh my fucking god, yeah. my legs and my lungs are just burning. I just wanted someone to either kick the ball off the field, or the crowd just swallowed me up and get me out there. I was yeah, glowing. That's mad. Yeah, yeah, it was good. No, it was good. Um, yeah, like you said, like over there, you are playing. I know now with the um, fuck. What's the Pro Fourteen getting called now? United Rugby oh, Championship. You've yeah. got obviously all the South African teams, but you know playing in the US, like you said, you're going through time zones. You're playing in the altitude. You're bloody. Yeah. You say you're playing at thirty degrees, and then you could be minus something in Seattle. You know, it's uh, a yeah. constantly fighting the elements. You know. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's a challenge. Like, uh, but then that's the part of it. This is good, I suppose. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What what and as for like training and stuff, is it is it like being in a real professional setup? You is it or is it a bit more chilled like the training? Uh, no, like it was obviously it was intense as like the pro for you know premiership in training, but there would be like fully fully like double day trainings and stuff like we normally absolutely have like Monday Tuesday off Wednesday, yeah. Thursday team run and travel on the Friday or something whatever. So it'd be normal setup, but just. Yeah, obviously, like just the intensity probably wasn't as high, mm. as high. Mm. Um, and obviously, it's, it's boys who are still learning as well. So obviously, you've got boys who there who have been playing long, like the American boys, but they're like such good athletes because they've a lot of them played football or and stuff like that. So they pick up really quickly as well. So yeah, it's, it's good to see like them boys work hard. So you should be trying to help them as well as like that. So anyway, yeah, not quite the the pro fourteen, but it's mm. a good level. Yeah, yeah. You you'd be like the uh, one of the more well definitely the exp one more experienced players then in the setup. You know? Yeah, I would have, yeah. In, to, in terms of like playing in leagues and stuff, I was probably one of the most experienced. Yeah, but the, like I said, boys have been to World Cups. And yeah, stuff yeah. as well. So, mm. well, they played international rugby and mm. stuff like that. So, it, I did, like I obviously didn't feel like I was. I think anything I felt that, like coming to a good environment with boys who still got the same like sort of ambitions as me as well. Want to play. High level rugby, so yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is uh, you mentioned that now? So obviously you're gonna go over there, play your next season. What what is the long term plan? Maybe coming back and or just not even thinking about that yet. Uh, I, to be honest, you <clears throat> just to see how this season goes now. Really, you never know how big this 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 league's gonna get, and if I have a good season, I might. You know, I got a, a plus one option as well, so I could if I if the club and myself. I'm both happy I could stay for another season. Oh, awesome. But it's just like, um, just, you know, it goes really. Just mm. I enjoyed that. It was nice to be back with the family. So, mm. so I'm going to go hopefully I'll go back now next year and yeah, to see how it goes, see what, see what comes up really then, isn't it? And Because you never know who's going to be watching that league in terms of clubs or how well I'm going to be doing. So if I do well, hopefully something back here can come up. And if not, and I, I'm happy to just come back and yeah. to play like yeah, local rugby, whatever, you know, I, yeah. I don't mind. That's awesome. Fair play. Like you said, if, if if I was a professional rugby player, I'll be honest, I'd be fucking trying to get into America, I think. Yeah. Just, just like what you're saying now is like, tick, or like really appeals to me, you know, like yeah. going around to all those cool cities. And like you said, you have a day then, like a night out maybe in, I don't yeah. know, LA or New Orleans and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Good, like, you know? yeah how, I know that. How, how do they go with your accent, Joe? Oh, First session, I was trying to make a point of of death. And I was talking and I speak really fast anyway. Right? And yeah. One American boy, Cecil, was like, "Fuck, does anyone know to look the site the subtitles on this on this motherfucker?" <laughs> and I just remember going, "Oh, fuck's sake!" Yeah. Right? And then, but no, no, actually, no one can understand me for the first yeah. couple of weeks. I had to repeat myself all the time. No better. Eh? Like, is that is it? One of the boys that was Irish, Charlie. He played for the RGC at one point. Hmm. So he sort of understood me well, and then there's a couple of boys who were English. I could speak with them fine. Stuff like that. So there's 
slowly some of the boys here started to adapt to what I was saying but yeah. not all the time when I was leaving the boys were still the same like me they didn't have a clue what he said the last few months <laughs> yeah. just like ah oh, yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, and I can, I can, I remember seeing something, and then them saying, "Oh yeah, yeah." And I, could think, I remember like, really like, like looking at it, thinking, "The amber fucking clear I'm on." Okay, <laughs> trying to be polite and go, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. Just, <laughs> just looking straight through you, like, and it was, yeah. yeah. You probably have the same. It was the same in New Zealand, I'm guessing, with you, was it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, two boys I live with. Uh, the two, I live with two brothers, Harrietty and Manua. They, they were like Fijian. Mm. Descendants of a G, and one of them plays for Fiji now. He's a oh, prop from Fiji. Yeah. And uh, they were just like laughing at me. I thought I'd say something because he'd be like, what, what the fuck yeah. are you on about tonight? Nice. Sitting there going, like, oh, like, don't worry. Not, I just forget about it. Like, this. But, I, um, I, I think, like, because the Welsh accent is quite, well, it's, it is unique in it, but, you know, maybe Americans and, you know, Americans and even Southern Hemisphere, they're used to an English accent, aren't they? Yeah. Or even an Irish accent. There's a lot of Irish out there. But yeah. Wales, there's not many Welsh, like, you know, no, accents, no. I guess, to that, you know? But, um, I remember, like I said, when I was living in Oz, and some guy came up to me, he goes, you're not Irish. That's not an Irish accent. I said, no, you're right. He goes, you're Scottish. I said, no. He goes, you're English. Or well, Scouts, he called me, or some of Geordie, yeah. you know? And he could not work out. He was, he, he was going through all these accents. And I said, I'm not none of them. He goes, where are you then? I was like, I'm fucking Welsh. And he's like, <laughs> oh, you're from Wales. And he was just, oh. But he went through every accent you could think of, but he just didn't say Wales. Like, But uh, yeah. no, it's a, it's a funny old thing, the accent, isn't it? Like, um, yeah. I, do it, I do it now, right? Because my girlfriend's like Australian and she's living yeah. over there in Wales. And like, say, just say, if I'm talking to her friend or anything, my accent like goes, I have a real funny twang that I speak to Aussie, yeah. you know? You know? Yeah, just adapt. I just adapt to it. I don't know what it is, but when I speak to like you or you know Welsh people, I just talk like I do normal. Back out then, yeah. Yeah, just back to normal, like so. But, um, no, that's class. And what's what else? What was that? Anything else I wanted to go through with you? Oh yeah, that's. I want to run back something real quickly. So you know, you said now they do the drafting in Houston. Yeah. So you're not guaranteed to be with them, you. Is that what's the score? Yeah? I don't know. I... I don't think so. I, don't, I think they can just like so. Say if they need like a say someone needs a second row, yeah, and, and they had three centers. I think they could say, "Oh, look, we'll give you a center if you give us one of your second rows." I think that's how it works. Anyway, ah, that's yeah. pretty mad. That is, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Like you see in the NBA, you see players yeah. like drafted and swapped and stuff. Yeah, I think I still think they. I think they use that system. I'm not 100 percent sure, but yeah. I think they do. And they got like um, a, a, they got like a draft process come up now, and like they. By the select boys, not like the yeah. NFL, they do like training days and the scouts will go and watch them and stuff like that. So they do this pretty like mm. NFL sort of structure, you know? Yeah, I, to be honest, I, I read that. I read it on somewhere. I wrote it down. Pre season activities, um, they will allow the media to come in and look at look at standout players. So yeah. I, I read that online somewhere. So yeah, um, yeah that's pretty interesting, that is. Imagine that. Imagine, imagine yeah. you're set on like Houston and like, I don't know, Utah, want you? And you've got to go. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I mean. Like, it's like, that's the the way they've sort of adopted rugby. They've sort of taken it and sort of done it their way, which is pretty good, I think, you know? Yeah. No, definitely. Yeah. It's like nothing like that in over here, is it? You know? No. It's, it's, uh, it. <laughs> it's kind of their own, uh, own thing. And uh, no, it's awesome. And uh, as for like, um, Live in and stuff. Where, where do you live? In, are you in the city of Houston or? Uh, we're just south of the city, like this, like five ten minutes in the car. So you can see the city skyline, like all the, the buildings oh, and stuff, and the apartments and stuff. Yeah. But we live in an apartment block. All the boys live there. Is it? Uh, all the team yeah. is in an apartment block. Yeah, but yeah, and and normal people like live in there as well. Oh, and, um, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So you, whatever you do, like if you have a food, you'd be like, right, boys, I'm gonna get some food. And actually, you know, the car we follow boys, yeah, I'll come, I'll come. And we, we wouldn't do things on your own, really. You'd always have five or six boys wanting to do something. So you were always together, which is pretty good as well, you know. Because mm. I suppose if you live on your own up there in different places, you'd probably get a bit lonely. But because you're with the boys all the time, I'm a laugh and joking and yeah. doing stuff is pretty awesome. Like, Yeah, that's awesome. And is there any, there's some Houston natives in the team as well? Sorry? Is Na- it, oh, it, Houston natives. Yeah, um, natives. Yeah, there's one. There's one by um, I can't remember the name now. Bloody, 
Oh, fucking hell. You've got to kill me for this as well. He's, he's a top look. Um, yeah, but he, he was from born and raised in Houston. Yeah, so he knows all the hot spots for like foods. Like, yeah, you want to go for a drink, everything. Like, yeah, a lot of boys have been there for, for a couple of years just playing. They still play club rugby as well. Like, Houston have their own team, like Houston Town, HTX, they call it to Houston. Yeah, right. They have their team, so they, they play on like the day after us and stuff. Hmm. Um, so like, there's a lot of boys who've been there for, for a few years. So they sort of knew the city like back with them, I suppose. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was the only thing. The other thing I found was driving on the wrong side of the road. Oh, I bet. You you are driving over there, yeah? You've got a yeah. car. Oh. I, I just get myself and I got in the car. I'll blow off. God save them. Yeah. I, I remember I was pulled out one day from a T-junction. I went up the wrong side of the road. People locking at me. <laughs> so, but, so I was driving on the left side of the road. And I was like, yeah. oh, bollocks. Yeah, was, yeah. I bet you're getting used to driving on the other side of the road back here now, yeah? Again. Oh, I was a bit ropey at the start, to be honest. It was the yeah. sketch. And uh, I come back, yeah, and I was like, oh, bollocks. But I'm actually right now, thank God. It's, it's, so, it's very quick, like, yeah. no, that's awesome, eh? And uh, you could say it's, uh, no, it's awesome. Like I said, I, I read, to be honest, I've been looking, right? Um, one of the boys asked me, he goes, oh, how do you find uh, this Joe Thomas? I said, I've been looking to get someone on from the major, what was it, major league rugby for a while. Yeah, and then if I can see Joe Thomas is over there, first Welshman, well, only Welshman over there. I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna get Joe on. But I remember yeah. David, I don't know if you listen to my podcast with Dav, but he yeah. mentioned, yeah, they told me off there on the podcast, I can't remember, but he mentioned you were gone over there, so it kind of all worked out well. And like, obviously, appreciate you coming on and like giving a bit of insight what it's like over there and stuff, you know. It's, um, yeah, and like you say, you're, you're on CBS and is it ESPN as well? I'm gonna tell you, yeah. Well. You, you can watch the games. I think you can watch the games are free on this on the app. It's the rugby the rugby network app. Right. Yeah. Just download that and sign sign up, and you can watch all the games are free. Like mm. the day after, you can like fully record, like um, stream them off the app. Then if you watch the games back rather than sign up till two in the morning to watch them. Yeah. The time difference, but oh, that's my time. Yeah. They wake up on a Sunday morning, watch them in the morning. Yeah, I I say I, I watch um they're on YouTube like and like, yeah. great quality. You know they've got you know. All the footage you need to see and all that jazz, but like I yeah, said, yeah. the level of what I've seen over there, it fucking looks good. You know, yeah, throw the ball about driving malls and fucking looks the path like. Yeah, I think it's only gonna get better as well. I know like a lot of boys are saying like they'd love to come over here for like Kiwi, Kiwi boys, Australian boys, South African boys. Everyone's trying to get over there, so I feel quite fortunate. You know, any any big names you know of, Joe from Wales? So want to come over? You want to tell? Uh, no, I, no inside information. No, no inside info, yeah. no. No, um, but no, like, to be honest, no one's really um, asked me, like, how, how did I get over there or anything. I've had a couple of conversations, but I said, oh, I'd love to do that in a few years. So, yeah, yeah. I speaking with um, Ask Genj on the weekend, I caught up with him. I said, I got only well up the nest, and he was saying, like, that's somebody like to do at the end of his career and stuff like that, you know. So, I think mm. boys will eventually start going there more and more often. Yeah. No, oh, I think I think so as well. Ellis Genj, yeah, he's he's like in the England, like he's uh doing well for like he's still with Leicester, yeah. Yeah, he's a Leicester, yeah. And he's still uh he's still in the England mix as well, isn't he? So yeah. And he's young. How old is Ellis Genj? About twenty six, I think. Yeah, my 26, my yeah. twenty six. For a few more years, yeah, I'd say over here, isn't he? Yeah, oh god, uh, yeah. Push on. I think it might be ready then probably be a big league then, you know. Hmm. I say you say you've got that to your name now, and hey, whether you come back or whether you stay there, I don't know. Are you single? Are you single? I uh, yeah, uh, but I don't think I could like to live there, mind. Oh, I say, what if you meet a girl or something over there? No, no, just too often. Too often, yeah. Can't do that. Well, you know, I don't know. Do my house, man. I, no, to be honest, with you, like I don't mind going away for short, like small spells. Yeah, but I think I'll always be home by an home by home by yeah. So it's good. It's good to get away and. And stuff and get away from Wales for a short period of time. Yeah. Like, like yourself, like you probably know, like traveling and stuff. And when you're, in, when you're home, then it's just nothing like home, is it? No, nothing like home at all. So just just even like you meet awesome people and stuff, but yeah. having the, the banter with your friends is like you can, yeah. can't get it anywhere else in the world, you know? No. Yeah. That's what I mean. Like, it's, it's different because uh, like over here, like I, I love going up to the club with the boys and trying to have the beers. Exactly. Like it's just over there. There's no, there's, there's no rugby clubs, so anything like that. You go to the bars and stuff. So, and it's just a small, like the village sort of 
banter mentality like that. Yeah. I'll always have them. That's why like I don't think I never live anywhere else. No, I, I think I think a lot of people like, you know, if they came up to say South Wales, like imagine people from America came to South Wales and came to a local pub. I think yeah. they'd have like a bit of eye opener, wouldn't they? Yeah. Like, yeah. Like yeah. What's going uh, on really? Yeah. I mean, I, I think they'd love it as well. So, because they're, they're too fair. Like, the Mac people are really friendly and really, like, I really enjoyed my time there. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was, I definitely, well, I recommend they come both ways. You know, I think they should come over this side of the world as well. Yeah. Definitely. Experience it over here. Yeah. Well, listen, listen, draw. I know I, I told you half of 45 and we come up to an hour. Like you say, oh, time flies, isn't it? it? Sorry, man. I'm cheering you off. What's that? I'm cheering you year off there. Sorry, man. Hey, I love it. I, that's why I do it. You know, I enjoy conversations, but uh, yeah. I've actually got to go training on myself in five minutes. Oh, yeah. Uh, no, I appreciate you coming on, Joe. It's awesome. Uh, any shout outs where we can fight people can follow you on Instagram or Twitter or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I have um, Instagram and Twitter. Um, I think it's at Joseph Thomas 1312. I don't know why I've had the for them numbers on some, <laughs> and then just uh, Joseph underscore Thomas on Twitter. So, um, yeah, give me, if you want to give me a follow, crack on and stuff like that. But I'm pretty boring on social media, to be fair. <laughs> don't even post much or anything. So, no, I like I said, I was having a look. You got some good photos up there of you in action. Yeah, a couple of speedo shots. Yeah. Of... yeah get, get behind Joel, guys, and you also can find and follow me on Instagram and follow my YouTube channel, the CD Sport Podcast. So share the word share the word on that one and share the love. Joe Thomas, everybody. Yeah, cheers, mate. Thanks for having me. Uh, and uh, yeah, hopefully it's a good lesson for everyone. So uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. We Top appreciate man. it. Top man, Joe. Yo. Oh.